I did buy this detector off of Battleground Detectors. Bought it off a of Nugget Noggin. And uh, it was my backup and I wanted to kind of do a continuation of the video that I started on uh, part one on giving this a, a review. And after using it for a day and a half, uh, here are my thoughts about the Garrett Apex. Well, I am going to run this in my my custom mode which is going to be discriminating out everything down to up to 30 and uh, we don't need the uh, the light switch on the light so we're gonna flip through there and turn that light off and sensitivity we're gonna run down two bars volume we're gonna leave there iron volume down we're gonna be running in multiple frequency and uh, we just hit channel one because nobody else is around me. And so, well, I don't know why the light is still on. Let's turn that light. There, it's off. All right, trying out this new Apex. And uh, I've been reading a lot. There's got a lot of chatter on it. And it's true, when I'm running in multiple frequency, there's a lot of chatter. When it hits a good target, it'll lock on, but in between the target, there's a lot of chatter. It's hitting on everything and kind of falsing and kind of driving me crazy. And so I got off of multiple frequency and went back to single frequency. I'm running, as you can see, let me go, I'm running in 15 frequency. And I've noticed that when I go into single frequency and uh, even my sensitivity is uh, down just two bars, which is good, it's it's really accurate. It's really picking up really good when I, it, it seems to be doing better in a single frequency than a multiple frequency. But this is the selling points to multiple frequency. But uh, it still works fine in multiple frequency. It's just a lot of chatter. If you can handle the chatter, it's fine. And I've tried to get rid of the chatter by ground balancing, by taking the sensitivity all the way down to to just three bars and still to no avail. But as soon as I put it into a single frequency, that chatter went away. I was just getting an 8384 and Sure enough, my first target, this is my first silver. My first coin with the Apex was a, um, a wheat penny. And my first silver is going to be, is that, what is that? It's going to be a mercury dime. Yeah, it's going to be a mercury dime. Let's see if we can kind of, kind of without scratching too much, see if we can get a date on that. Uh, 1945 and that's about right everything I've been digging out of here has been in the 40s and that's where the circus came out here the elephants were out here and they all were right in this area so this is like my fourth or fifth silver out of here so let's keep going and uh, just practicing with the apex and let's see what else we can get I was getting a solid 78 about uh, let me see it is uh, seven inches down eight inches down the whole length of a pinpointer with the apex and uh i got my very first one of these you won't believe it. i've been detecting for seven years i never dug one but i finally got check this out a crotal bell check that out it's still intact it's still good so let me clean this up and we'll get a close-up on it my first crotal still got the dinger it's got some fancy down on the bottom of it I don't see a number on it, what size it's going to be. Uh, I'm so excited about this. I've never dug one, and I finally got one. So, amen to that. All my coins have been in that little dirt line right there, been in a, in a row. And now the crotal bell, probably coming off the circus, came off of a horse or something. All right, let's take some pictures, and let's keep on going. Well, I was getting a 60 to a 64, jumping around, came out being a nickel. But when you wipe this thing, it's got a little silver tinge to it, and it is a D. I don't know what the date on it is, but it is a war nickel. I'll take that. I'll take a silver nickel any day. All right, now I got to start digging these 60, 64 signals because I know they're going to be. They're all in the 40s, I know, because that's what everything is in here. So. Let's keep on going. Maybe we'll find some more. Well, finds today are few and very far between. I came back over here to a house that I hit. I told y'all before, it's the house that uh, 
I had the most coins. I've dug the Fatty Indian out of here, V nickels, Barber dimes, half dollars, Indian heads, lots of Indian heads, and a lot of other silver coins. Uh, but I must have did it really good because all I dug was pull tabs, and uh, uh, there's nothing else. But I did get one signal here. It's a 75, thinking it's going to. I mean, a 76, thinks it's going to be a copper penny. Hopefully, you know, a wheat penny or something. But it's ringing a little bit low. But uh, anyway, let me turn you around here. Let me show you what I got. Well, what would it, would, it, would it be if Preacher Digger didn't get his cross? That's what I got. It's ringing up like a 76, uh, 75, 76. I can tell it's pretty old. I need to clean it up. It's not, I don't think it's silver because it's ringing too low. But anyway, that's a good find. Uh, only one I got so far if it's going to do the backyard now. So let's uh, let's get at it. Well, I'm back over here at the uh, circus grounds and let's get a 48 to a 50 signal. I already dug it up. I had to go get my camera. And uh, I got another 1944D silver nickel. You can tell by the edge there it's silver. I'll take that. So let's keep on digging. Let's see what if we can find some more silver out here. Just got another 81 signal and real choppy. And that's the way they're coming out here. These are looks like it's gonna be another Mercury dime. Is it gonna be Merc? Yeah. Eh, I don't know. Let me see if I can clean this up and get you a date. Okay, it's going to be a 1937, I believe, or 1927. Looks like 37 to me, but I don't have good eyes. But that's what's been in here, and they're all in this one little, in this one line here. That's good. All right, I got silver nickel, silver dime. Let's keep on going. Let's see what else we can get. These coins are very deep and ringing up very weird. You can see there, this is another, going to be another silver dime, but it's ringing up at 88 to a 94. And, uh, sorry about that, somebody was yelling at me. I don't know what it is yet. It's going to be another mercury dime, most likely in the 40s. Let's pop it there. They're coming out, it's real wet and moist down here. Pretty much, I bet that's going to be in the 40s. We'll just keep on going. If it's a key date, I'll get back with you. If not, I'm going to move on. Well, here are the finds with my Garrett Apex. These are the first finds. I ended up with uh, the cross and uh, five rosies. I mean, five, one rosie and five mercuries and two war nickels. A uh, ton, a ton of wheat pennies. And uh, that's about it. I hunted about a day and a half on it. And so um, it did pretty good. They're pretty good. I'm happy with that. Here are my thoughts about the Garrett Apex. In the class of the detector that it is, an intermediate de detector, uh, it's a good detector. It definitely is the Apex of the A-Series. Uh, it's better than the Ace 400 in my opinion. Uh, I like the control panel. I like the sleek design. I really love the weight of this thing. It is so light. Uh, it's not even coil heavy. And the, the sniper coil, the Viper coil I mean, is uh, very good. I like that narrow but long 11 inch by 5 inch uh, uh, coil and um, I, I don't have anything negative to say about it. It's, it's a good detector if you're an intermediate detectorist but if you're an advanced detector it's not going to do what you really want it to do. Uh, I, you know if I had to compare this to my Equinox uh, there really isn't a, a, a comparison because the Equinox is an, is an advanced detectorist. It's a lot, it's a different level. But I have to say this thing is very competitive. Now I'm a little disappointed in the in the multiple multiple frequency though. Uh, it was real chattery in multiple frequency, and I continue to ground balance it. I continue to uh, run the sensitivity down, and as long as it was in multiple frequency, it kept a lot of chatter. And uh, I just don't like a lot of chattering, you know. And so that's why I didn't like the Max after a while. It just chattered so, so much. And that's why I love the Pro, because it never chatters. And, uh, but I did find that I switched back over to single frequency. Uh, I was in uh, uh, 10 kilohertz sometimes and 15 kilohertz uh, most of the time. It ran very silent and it was very sensitive. Uh, it still picked up at eight inches. No problem picked up at eight inches. I dug that Crotal Bell at about uh, eight inches. I dug. Uh, several mercury dimes today uh, at about seven inches. 
So I even dug a 22 bullet shell at eight inches. So it definitely is sensitive and it definitely will uh, uh, do the job. So I give it, I give it an A. Uh, it's a good detector uh, if you're a beginner or you're an intermediate. But if you're an advanced detectorist, you know, you're probably not going to enjoy it. It's a good backup to have. I can't say anything negative about it. It's, it's, a, good, it's a good detector. I like Garrett. And, uh, but the only problem, I guess, would be the multiple frequency was real chattery, but it, it worked. But I like the single frequency better on the Apex. So that is my review. I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope you enjoyed the finds. But anyway, I, I found a few things. Let me show them to you. Let me turn you around. Well, here's all my trash. I dug a bunch of it. Most of that I dug not with the Equinox 800, but I dug most of the trash with the uh, Garrett Apex because I was trying to learn the machine, and so I wanted to dig everything, and so I was digging everything up and trying to learn the numbers and how it responds and stuff like that. Normally, I don't dig that much trash. I can tell what's trash and what's not, but being the first time on the Apex, I wanted to dig it all and see what I could find. So here's all my, my treasures on this trip. Not a whole lot to show for three days of digging, but it's, it's okay. All a big pile of pennies. I don't know how many I have there. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, seven quarters. Got a silver plated spoon. Actually, I dug that in Missouri, so that doesn't go here. I dug a big brass. That ought to clean up and be in my collection really good. A couple of numbers and the letter R. I dug uh, 20 wheat pennies. And I got uh, six Indian heads, all in the 1800s. This was the first one that I dug, the 1899. And those five were in the same spill that I dug. And uh, got a debuckle, some other little strap. Preacher Digger got his cross. I'm going to clean that up and see what all that says on, on it later on. This is one of this is my favorite find of the trip. The Crotal Bell. It's my first one. A couple of 1944D war nickels. One 1952 Rosie. And uh, all the, the uh, Mercury Dimes are in the 30s and the 40s. And uh, so there it is, folks. That is all my treasures on this trip. Hope you enjoyed the show. And uh, like I said, the greatest treasures not coming up to Wisconsin and digging them and put them on your tailgate. The greatest treasure, what you can be found up in heaven. Keep searching. Keep looking up. Until we meet again, I just want to say happy hunting and God bless. <laughs>